So we kind of want to say, oh, well, look, I, in some sense what this is telling us is something very important. Um, you kind of know what this does to you, this alpha k. It does this, right? In some sense, if it weren't for that n, you'd have the exact solution. But can I sort of, in some sense, fold that into my solution technique? In particular, what I'm going to do, move this over to the other side. Do you recognize that? Now you have something that looks like a first order differential equation with some just coefficients. And this is your problem term. So this problem term, I'm going to basically figure out what's my integrating factor and put an integrating factor directly in here to get out my solution. Okay? So how do I do that? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply everything, this whole equation, by e to the minus alpha k t. Okay? Start with that. And if I do that, uh, and by the way, this is like my mu that I just had before. What do I get? I get u hat t e to the minus alpha. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop the k for a moment, just but remember it's a function of k. t minus alpha u hat e to the minus alpha t is equal n hat e to the minus alpha t. And if you look at this side over here, isn't this whole thing here just the derivative of u hat e to the minus alpha t? I've, by picking that, I've made the left-hand side uh, exactly the derivative of something. Okay? Equals. Okay? All right. So what I want to do then is make a transformation of variables. I'm going to define a new variable, call it v hat, which will be u hat e to the minus alpha t. And then this equation that we have here simply becomes dv dt is equal to there you go so what you do is you have your field u right and you're trying to solve for it and you have this numerical stiffness issue that you're you're trying to handle right so this this thing here is modeling this equation here the L might have a high derivative, like fourth derivative, sixth derivative, eighth derivative, something like this is problematic that's killing you. Notice what this does. This alpha is a function of k, and it, carry, it basically is solving the linear term for you exactly, right? What is the linear thing doing? For instance, if it's a fourth derivative, it gives you a k to the four. Well, you picked up the exact solution of this linear term exactly in that piece. So it's a kind of a smart way to do it. It's almost like you say, I know what the linear term is doing exactly, so I will, in some sense, factor it out. That's where all the stiffness happens. So I'll just factor that out and then figure out what the contribution is now by stepping with the nonlinear terms. But I've taken care of the stiffness directly that way. Okay? Yep, yep. So for instance, if L is, let's say, uh, a fourth derivative plus, you know, whatever, and, uh, and let's say plus b times the first derivative plus c, then alpha k would be minus k to the fourth plus i k with a b in there plus c. And in some sense, you said, if I've got all these terms in the linear term, this here accounts for it explicitly and exactly. And then ask, what are the corrections, though, now, from having the null in your term? Remember, you're taking small delta steps, delta t. So you just start off with your initial u field. You Fourier transform it. You multiply by this guy. That gives you your initial v. 
Okay, and you're going to do this for every delta t step. Then you go here, you evaluate your nonlinear term, Fourier transform it, multiply, take a step forward, and then now you're going, you have to make sure which variable you're in. You're now working with the v hat variable to step in your OD45, but then you have to come back out to u to get your field to calculate the new nonlinear term, come back in, step forward in v. Okay? But, Here's what it buys you. And I have a personal experience with this. I know, see, that's where, do you see that? With teaching, you have to like talk about the philosophy and give a personal experience. Here's my personal experience. You want to hear it? I know you do. So uh, in grad school, I had a problem with a fourth derivative like this, and it was part of my thesis. And, uh, and actually, the guys who kind of put this technique out early in that day, they were, this had just come out not too much earlier than this. But, I was solving of the fourth order equation but just by what we're doing in class with what you're doing in this new homework, right? Which is Fourier transfer everything, march forward. My time steps that I was having to do this thing for were 10 to the minus 6. That's what my delta t's look like. Now, let me tell you a little about uh, how it relates to me personally, too, with this. This is back then, and I, I'm a little ashamed to admit this, we had a high smoking machine in our office, which was a Pentium 286. That's right. Solving code with the 286 Pentium. Shoom. They just come out. We were just smoking code. This is bad. Okay? That's a really small time step on a 286 Pentium. Okay? So you implement you implement this method and I you're basically then allowed to go Three orders of magnitude increase in step size. If you did do straight up FFT, the numerical stiffness forced me, 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 to take 10 to minus 6. I wasn't even forced to do that, so I, I, so I faked the problem out. <laughs> like this, I filtered it. I took into account the fact that I know exactly what the fourth derivative is actually doing to the solution, put it in this routine, got up to 10 minus 3. On the Pentium 286, I was able to finish my PhD. Otherwise, I might still be there. <laughs> okay? How's that for a personal story? Everybody get a personal story of victory. All right. So, uh, this is, but this is the kind of difference it can make. Now, let me make a couple comments about it. And this is important. When does this actually pay off? It turns out the break-even point is really, you have to have at least sort of three derivatives here, or four. If you just have two derivatives, it doesn't really matter if you do the filter technique, or if you just do straight up FFT like we're doing. This is why in class with the FFT you're doing with the spiral waves, it really doesn't matter. If you applied this technique or if you're just doing what you're doing, about the same amount of time. You go up to fourth derivatives, huge difference. Okay, so higher derivatives when you really do have stiffness. Second order derivatives don't give you that much stiffness. So you don't have to worry about it so much. So that's, that's one point. Second point. Delta T, you need that delta T here for every step you take, every move you make. Okay, uh, there you go. We have to have this delta T. By the way, do you have delta T if you're using OD45? You don't really, right? MATLAB takes away access from you to delta T from you controlling what the delta t is. It adapts its step size, picks its delta t, but you need to know the delta t to do this, to transform your initial condition so that you can do this thing. Right? So you need to know the delta t ahead of time. So this is complicated. If you're going to work with OD45 or OD23, you don't have access to one critical parameter in this problem. Okay? There are funky ways to make it work, but I'm just saying that if you're going to do this, it's not as straightforward. When you write your own OD45 code, right, if you were to write your own fourth order Runge Kutta, you would just say, I pick a delta t ahead of time, and then once you pick that delta t, you can just say, okay, once I got the delta t, I know what to do here with each step. Okay? Because this here, this process that you do, the stepping, is over one delta t. All right. Yeah. We take the um, 
reported, and then you have this alpha which is polynomial, and then you do this um, integrating factor solution, right? Not with a B, derivative. You okay? Now, now what happens there? You have so what you what you really need to do is this here. You're going to say, okay, what I'm going to do? Here's how the algorithm is going to work. You get your u. You evaluate the nonlinear term with u. You Fourier transform it. Now you have n hat. You already knew what alpha k is, right? Because you have it in the problem. So you say, I evaluate this, I multiply by this over 1 delta t, and then I can take delta t into the future step. Okay, so negative alpha uh, is a function of k, and so it's yeah. evaluated each k, and times delta t? Or times f, times delta t. This is just times delta t here, and this is an alpha k, delta t. You just take 1 delta t into the future here. Once you step forward 1 delta t in the future in v, you need to reevaluate this end which means from the V, you need to get back the U. And here's how you get the, the U and the V relation. So you get the V, and the U is, well, I can just take this to the other side. Take the V field. No, just, it's no stepping. Just multiply by this. Right? So you take V, multiply by E, V, plus alpha, you know, if I move it over, and then you have U hat, inverse Fourier transform, you have U. Oh, now that I have U, I can come back here, evaluate, and hat again. Take a step forward. Got B. This is your algorithm. So remember, just uh, just like in the FFT routines, right? You always have to come back out and, get, and, and ask if I have a nonlinear term, what is U? What is V in these spiral waves? I have to get back the raw U and V, and that's what this formula is for. So you can step forward in V, but then you have to say, well, but V is not really U. It's it's this. It's, yeah, exactly. <laughs>